How did you feel after that event when you're back in your office and washing the blood from your hands? What were you thinking? I was just, uh, I, I can't, it's indescribable actually, I don't know. I've seen people dying many times, I'm, it's my profession. I've seen even people hit, in, hit by a bullet and uh, while I was over her body, try, I didn't think about anything other than to do the things that a doctor has to do when he faces such a situation. But afterwards, I would just went to the bathroom and just tried to... I, I was washing my hands compulsively and I don't know how many, for how many minutes. And uh, I was appalled. I was, uh, I, you know, after I stood up from, you know, when, she, when I stood up, it, when I realized that she was dead and there was nothing else I could do, I, st I stood up and all of a sudden a fear of death overwhelmed me because I, th I felt that she was one meter away from me, that bullet could have hit me, hit me, and that guy or that person who had shot her could have been there, still there. So it was the first time in my life that I really felt the fear of death and I was feeling so bad about myself because I, I felt that I'm having this fear and she's dead and I'm fearing about myself and what's, uh, you know, what's wrong with me. Uh, I was having this sense of guilt, this profound sense of guilt that I couldn't save her. Um, now I'm thinking about myself and, uh, well, I didn't sleep for three nights, to be honest, afterwards. I had the look in her eyes, uh, well, she didn't have time to say anything. And she just had, had this look in her eyes that what has happened, why did, has this happened? Uh, that she, uh, a very innocent look. Uh, and I was overwhelmed. I, I, I just went home to see my fa I didn't go home to my own place la that night. I went to my, fa my father's home and uh, I didn't want to talk about it because I thought that this is so much for my family. My father is 70 years old, so I didn't want to talk to them about it. But they knew that something had gone wrong and after they, uh, they pushed me so uh, hard to tell them what was, ha what was happening and all of a sudden that image was on the, on the news. It was uh, one of these channels, I don't remember, maybe CNN or Al Jazeera or I don't remember which channel was it, but uh, and I said that's me and they were just appalled so I don't uh, I, I can't explain I, I can't say what uh, you know it's indescribable I don't want anybody to s face this situation in their life then nobody has uh, the, uh, is that guilty to see such a thing but uh, uh, you have to see it to believe what I'm saying. Those images and the image of Nada, just her picture, has now become something of a, of a rallying point for the protesters. Yes. And by association, because you are in that footage, you are now connected to that in some way. How do you feel about that? I feel responsible. Uh, the most important thing, you know, I'm putting myself in jeopardy now, talking to you. And uh, but it was a hard, it was a tough decision to make, to come out and talk about it. But it was responsible. I she died for a cause, and the cause is not such a, a simple cause like you know people gathering rounds, creating a cause to get as an excuse to gather. She was fighting for basic rights, humans' basic rights. She wanted her vote to be counted. She wanted the. Uh, be, to be free, uh, the freedom of assembly, which is, uh, which is e even mentioned in the, uh, the Constitution of Islamic Republic of Iran, freedom of assembly, freedom of protesting, freedom of speech, which is uh, compromised now. And I don't want her blood to be, have been shed in vain. Uh, she died on the street to say something. And the, the fact that the image has traveled so fast around the world, it means something. It means that there is a message there. You will know that the Iranian authorities are suggesting that perhaps it was other protesters that could have killed Neda, that it could have been a stray bullet from one of the protesters. In your mind, do you think that that is a possibility at all? Oh, I don't know who can believe such a thing. 
But as an eyewitness, during the past 11 days in Tehran, I say I haven't seen any of the protesters, protesters carrying a gun, carrying nothing, even a, uh, even a knife, nothing. They just had their hands and their voice. And that was the, what they did. And who would... I, 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 yes, I've heard that. And it's terrible. I don't want know why these people are trying to cover a crime. This is a crime. This is not... This, it wasn't a war. This wasn't a war. This wasn't a, that someone would get killed. This is not collateral damage. This is a crime because protesters, unarmed people, civilians were on the street asking for something. And she was shot uh, without even knowing why and who, by what guilt. And uh, I believe that the government should prosecute this thing. Either that, uh, uh, why didn't they let her family bury her properly? Why didn't they uh, let her family to have a ceremony, memorial? And uh, why, two days later, let me tell you this, because our office is nearby the place, so we witnessed these things. Two days later, uh, I hear that people were planning to gather in a mosque to uh, pay their tributes to her. And it was cancelled by the government, which, uh, who told the uh, mosques not to let people gather all over Tehran. So people who had heard where this uh, incident had happened were coming there putting uh, buckets of flour in the place where she was shot. And what I witnessed was that uh, a car, a, a car, uh, a rubbish car came by and threw rubbish on the flowers and went away. One of my colleagues, not uh, one of my neighbors actually, who was there, told me the next day that because I left, t told me the next day that there were more than ten, ten people gathering there, and they were hit by the uh, besiege as well, to to be scattered and not to stay there. And this is what uh, enraged people. This is what uh, they want. Uh, you know, something has gone wrong. People believe that something has gone wrong with the elections. Okay, I'm not here to verify anything in that respect because I'm not a politician. But they were, but they were protesters to the results and that could be handled very wisely. Not by shooting them, not by hitting them, not by arresting everybody who was on the street trying to protest. What do you mean when we say protest? It's shouting. And in the past, in the last few days before th that Saturday, uh, people weren't even shouting. They were having these silent rallies. They, did, they weren't even shouting. They weren't even using that small tool they had. They were just walking in the streets. There are f f footages available all over the internet of people walking in the streets, not saying anything, just holding their hands up and some signs, nothing. And uh, is that is that the right, right way to handle the situation and then deny it? Uh, I, 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 I can't explain. I don't understand the, uh, why would the state TV say that, but nobody believes that. Nobody can believe that. You said that you were now fearful for your own safety. Can you envisage going back to Iran now? Uh, not now, not in this situation. Now I've been identified. And, um, you know, uh, well, I can't explain. You have to be in the system to understand it. Uh, they're going to denounce what I'm saying afterwards. They're going to uh, put s so many things on me after this. And uh, I'm here to say that I've never been in politics. I've never. Uh, advocated any idea other than the basic human rights, which I have advocated all my life. The evidence is all over, all over the place. I'm a writer. I was a journalist. I, I, I have published books. And people know me there in Iran, and uh, they would believe me when I say this. But I want the world to know that I'm here on my own will, trying to testify on what I, be I had to bear witness. And why I'm jeopardizing my situation is 
just the innocent look in her eyes before she died. And I, nobody would believe that uh, she was shot by a protester. She was, she was shot from front, not from behind. She was shot by a Basij member, which are the armed people. Yes, the anti-riot police never used uh, uh, firing guns. They never, they just, just use anti-riot uh, tools and uh, tear gases. But the Basij is armed, it's an armed force, and they don't uh, follow the rules that are set for the police. I don't, uh, the police is not shooting people. These people are. Arash Hadazi, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you for talking to me.